Now in geometric algebra, right, you get a different thing, right? So if I were to define actual vector product as something meaningful, I would do geometric algebra, right? So in geometric algebra, you have like a i plus b j plus c k. That's a vector, um, or let's call it uh, a e one plus b e two plus c e three, right? And uh, times uh, x e1 plus y e2 plus z e3, or e1, e2, e3 are the basis vectors. And when you do this, you get exactly what you would get in algebra algebra. You get ax e1 dot e1, which is um, 1, right? Uh, you, get, you get ax plus by plus cz, which is the dot product, right? Um, just from from these terms being like, but then you get the cross terms. You get um, plus a uh, y e1 e2 plus a z e1 e3 plus uh, b x e2 e1 plus b z e2 e3 plus c x e3 e1 plus C Y E three E two. That is what multiplication of a vector times a vector actually is if you're in a sane system. Now you may be looking at this and going like, what what? What the hell is all this? Right? Well, actually, so E1 E2 is a plane, right? E1 E3 is a plane, E2 E1 is minus E1 2, right? E2, E3 is a plane. E3, E1 is minus E1, 3. And again, uh, whoops, minus E1, 3. And this is minus E2, 3, right? And then you can combine the like terms here. So, so this is, um, I missed a plus here. Sorry, that's confusing. This is the dot product, right? That's a scalar plus um, a y plus or a y minus b x e 1 2 plus uh, a z uh, minus c x e 1 3 plus um, b z minus c y e 2 3. Okay, hopefully I didn't make a huge mistake, but this might start to look familiar, okay? So this is the dot product, this is the cross product. So the actual product, if you multiply two vectors together, you get the dot product and the cross product as the output, okay? But this isn't exactly the cross product, it's the wedge product. Um, this is actually a plane and not a vector, okay? And uh, if you do things this way, math makes a lot more sense than if you do the traditional way and is way more awesome. So, like, one of the reasons this is so freaking great is that it is exactly what you learn in grade school for multiplying algebraic equations, right? It's exactly the same. And that's also why it makes sense geometrically and is right. It's like so good. So, um, that is what I would define multiply to be if I was doing geometric algebra in my game engine, but I don't tend to do geometric algebra in my game engine. I tend to do it on paper. So this part, if we say, let's, if we say, uh, if, a is uh, this, right? We're going to say capital A is that vector and capital X equals that vector, right? If that's the case, um, then uh, A times X, like in linear algebra, you would use these to mean matrices, but like we don't have bold faced lowercase letters right now. So we're just rolling with it, right? Um, So this is, let's just say this is A, B, C. That's your more familiar notation, right? Um, X, Y, Z. 
All right. So hopefully that makes sense. And then if you say a times x, it's this, all right, uh, which factors to this, which by the way is, oh man, um, is um, a uh, dot b, we're going to use that period for the dot product, right, plus um, a wedge b, where this is the uh, the Grossman product or the, um, you know, the, the geometric algebra. What, so, so the dot product sometimes is called the inner product, right? And this is sometimes called the outer. Well, there's an outer product of vectors that gives you a matrix. This isn't exactly that, but it's the same terms as the outer product. It's just in a different form. Um, so this is like inner, inner and outer in one package. But when I do linear algebra in my own engines, I have a function called dot product and a function called cross product. <laughs> I don't use overloads for that. You've seen people overload caret for the wedge product. That Unreal Engine does that. Well, Unreal Engine overloads caret for the cross product, I think, if I remember correctly. What properties does this multiplication have? Is it useful in any means? Yes, it is very, very very, very useful, very useful. They never taught you the wedge product. Yeah, so physics physics is still very much um, linear algebra, but there are people who do who who do this geometric algebra kind of stuff in physics. Uh, so for example, I think Carver Mead. Carver Mead was doing something where he reformulated electromagnetism um, using this kind of a thing, using quaternions, which are related to this, right? If you know quaternions in game engines, right? Um, a quaternion is like, uh, you know, A, I plus B, J plus C, K plus D, all right? This is actually, this I, J, K is the same as E1, E2, E3. And this D is just a scalar like you might have. So one, somebody asked, what's this useful for? What it's useful for is you can do math on vectors and get residues that aren't vectors anymore, but that make sense, that tell you things. You can get planes and volumes and you know scalars and stuff. Um, and the reason we do E1, E2, E3 instead of I, J, K is because you might wanna go out to many dimensions. And if you use a number to label your dimension, you don't ever run out of dimensions, right? Whereas if you're IJK, you start using up all these letters and it's very confusing. Um.